Hey, this is Josh from Greenlight Studios, and we're going to dig into the master for Buried Alive's Eliminati. We're going to start from the initial mix that was sent all the way through the iterations to the final master. So if you're ready, then uh, let's hop into this and we'll try not to let you get too um, buried in the details. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here, this one was the very first bounce of a Lemonade. Now, let's just kind of like jump into to some stuff here. So these ones, you notice these first two, there's no effects on here at all. The third one, that's the one, uh, as you can see, my Barry Master. Uh, that was the one that I did based on the one that they sent. Final Mix 1 and 2 was I did that first Master here. And then after that, then um, Charlie made some changes to the mix and then sent it back over to me. And then this was the, the final Master. In Mastering, you're not trying to find other songs to copy you're trying to find other songs that the way i try and explain it to artists nowadays when i work with them is that at the end of the day what our goal is is that we want to be able to get it to where if somebody has you on a spotify playlist what are you in between like if we're playing artist one your song and then artist three what songs are we putting around there what are we trying to fit it in because different music some music's warm some music's bright some music's dynamic and some is just squashed completely and it all depends on what you're going for and there is no wrong it's all music there's probably going to be some kind of comments about there is wrong which you're you're not wrong but you kind of are because even stuff that we don't like sells lots of albums which means that art is art and art is subjective end of tangent Okay, so let's dig into this mastering, shall we? So I'm going to start off in a section here that I thoroughly enjoy. It's when things start picking up, but honestly, the whole song is awesome. Like, from the moment I was listening to it, I was super excited. Even when I was just listening to it as a friend going, dude, it sounds good. Here's the little stuff that I hear, but honestly, it sounds good. So ignore me if you like it where it's at. Like, at the end of the day, your job is to make sure that they're happy. Even if you feel ultimately you're right, you still need to, it's, it's their art. Make sure you remember that. So let's give this a listen here. So you can tell it's already a quality mix. Like even if I hadn't gotten involved, this sounds good. Now, mind you, if you don't do mastering, you may only notice subtle things about the changes or you may not notice any. That's okay. The more you do this job, the more your ear gets trained. It's like any skill set that you work on, you get good at. Work your skill set and your skill set will work for you. Anyway, so back to this. So those were the first two that were sent. Now, this third one, I got it a little too clean because your body is in the mids and you don't want to lose that. Like, if you've heard Charlie's playing, it's clean, like super clean. If he's going to play super clean, then I want to hear it super clean. At least that's how I felt. So here's the next one. And mind you, it is a little thin. The thing I liked is that there was more articulation in the cymbals, literally like the picking itself. <laughs> From here, what I'd like to explain is that there's things that I like from the initial mix and there's things that I like from the one that I did the rough on. But the problem was is that like neither Charlie nor I were quite happy with where that was because we kind of wanted kind of the best of both worlds and each one kind of had its own thing. So he went back, did a little bit of mixing, shot me over the unmastered one here. And so here, again, this isn't the final master, but this is the one right before. So this one was mastered, also sent back, and then more mixing was done and then the next one was sent back. So here's where we're at. Okay, so you're getting the idea so far. Um, I'll walk you through a little bit more of this as we get into this. I'm just kind of want to give you a broad overview before we dig in so you know what's changed and what we're listening for. Now we go to the final mix. And again, this was after one more mix back and forth. And at the end of the day, that's the thing is that we had a lot of fun with this because sometimes when you try and showcase to your friends of where your stuff is at, 
a lot of what you hear is, dude, it sounds amazing, or oh, that's awesome. And as an artist, you know, it feels good to hear that, but that doesn't really help us get farther or make it better. And so we had fun because it was literally like, okay, how can we make this better? What else can we do to make this kick even more ass, so to speak? But the last one here is where we actually had the final. <laughs> And I have to say that little bass run that was right before that, I love that bass run. Awesome job. Okay, so let's kind of take a, a dig between the different ones so you can kind of hear what's going on with them. And then once we can hear what's going on with them, then we're actually break down the final master and what happened. We're just going to take this little section here, um, same section we've been listening to, I'm not trying to bore you with one section, but familiarity so you can kind of see what's going on so i'm just going to bounce between these again you may not notice the differences if you do awesome you're a step ahead if you don't listen for fine details like it's going to be little things like more symbol more pick attack more warmth less warmth like different things just kind of listen for what you're going for okay so on this next portion what we're going to do we're going to actually kind of cycle through the different ones that we had so that you can hear the differences between them and again if you don't hear the differences and especially if you're listening on a phone if you're listening on a phone and you're trying to hear differences I can't help you with that one. And hopefully you know why. There's no subwoofer on a phone. I digress. Let's check this out and we'll kind of bounce between them. And then we'll kind of give a little bit of thoughts. Then we're going to actually break down the actual final master. Right about here. <laughs> Now, as you hear those different pieces, from beginning to end, the thing that I like to listen for is that his mix was good to start with. It didn't sound bad. Just for me, I wanted to hear more clarity because they're good. I want to hear that. I really want to hear that. But I also want the warmth. And one of the conversations that we had was we want to have good dynamics, but we can compromise a little bit of dynamics for the proper type of loudness. Not squishing it for squishing its sake, but to just have a nice, loud, solid master. Let's do a little dig in here. Just to show you the beginning to end. In the rhythms, you can really hear that. Like the original mix, there's a lot of uh, of that mid range. Mid range is where the guitar has like the, the the real body to it. And so if you take up too much mid range, it's just going to sound terrible. It's going to sound super thin. It can make it feel like it's heavier, but really you're losing all the body, which is where the heavy's really at. That's why I'm glad that he gave me too much than too little. Because if in mastering there's not enough, then you have to try and boost it up. If you try and boost it up, sometimes when you boost up that mid range, it's going to make somebody feel like you just sent them a, a master that you basically sent through a toilet paper tube and in reality there's just was lacking but at the end of the day again the artist is going to be right like you have to make sure that you serve your clients and you, you serve the artists that you work for and if you're doing this on your own it's your own art do what you want to do if it makes you happy it still makes you happy it's art so now i'm going to keep the limiter on here we are going to hear a little bit of a change in volume only because it's going to get pretty annoying for you if i keep going through adjusting the limiter back forth so let's just kind of walk through here now you couldn't see it because i have dual monitors i'm just slide it over i'm using this limiter only to raise the volume so you can hear it i'm going to drop it down this will not be actually limited in anything this is strictly being used just for volume because i want to keep it kind of consistent for you so here's where we're starting <laughs> Now again, it sounds really good. This very well could have just been the release and been good. As both a guitarist and a drummer, I want to hear the cleanliness of the picking. I want to hear a little bit more cymbal. Overall in the master, I want to bring the dynamics of the drums down just a hair because I like loud drums. I think most of us that have had a stint in metal are kind of like that. But by taking that, we want to have the, the drums be very prominent and because that's, that's really where a lot of your energy comes from. If it's too loud, then we stop feeling the whole song with it. Let's kind of walk through here what we've got going on. <laughs> 
one of the big tools that I use is this Waves Paz Analyzer. So if we just right out of the gate, let's play this and see what we're looking at. Okay, so now this is where I want to show you just right out of the gate that this was well mixed. When we're looking at this analyzer up here, there's a little more low end information here because if you notice, I have this low frequency resonant I have that down to 10. So when it first loads up, it's at like 40. This gives me more information in the low end on what I don't need. Because down in this area, anything below 30-ish, it's mostly going to be noise. It's going to be cluttering up your sound. So one of the first things that we do a lot of the time, not every time, but most of the time, is right here. We've got like a little low roll-off filter. And again, if you're on a phone or something, you aren't going to hear anything here. But if you are on something else, maybe will. So I'm going to swap this. So this is this is what we are cutting out. Now, as I say that, one of the big things to remember is that we're just trying to get rid of the stuff that's just muddying the mix, not giving it that low end that's the super heavy and, and warm and all that. I did have to taper a little bit here in um, like right here, it was 83. Part of that was because there was a little too much low end and I, I like me some low end, but we also want balance. And so if, as you can see here, right in this little section on this analyzer, it's a little bit higher. Now, the first thing I'm trying to do is kind of tame it to being flat. And as you can tell, like, he already did a good job. Like that's the only place that is really raised up is we've got a little too much in the lows and then a little bit too much in, in this low end. But that's also kind of a common thing for a lot of us that like low end. Using a high pass over here, it's not always going to be at this frequency. Like this one I did at 24. I could have moved it further this way. I could have moved it further that way. Listen to what you've got going on. At the end of the day, you're really just trying to make it sound better. Numbers are going to be irrelevant. I say that as I used to watch people with like the pro pro pros mixing their stuff. And I would write the numbers down and then I would try and reverse engineer stuff. And, and there is good in the reverse engineering. But the thing you have to remember is you have to train your ear. You don't train numbers because the numbers like knowing the frequencies where things happen that you want to train, knowing how many dB at what place, it's going to depend on what your mix sounds like, on what your tracking sounded like. So don't get caught up in numbers like use presets. Those are fine, but they're not they're starting points, not ending points. Moving along, this pull tech here actually came in later in the game. So I'm going to skip this for right now and come back to it because Basically, I'm going to try and go through it around the way that I did when I was doing this so that you can kind of see the thought process. Next, I came in with my Pultec Pro. This is a UAD item. I use a lot of Universal Audio, which is what this is. The card on your system is actually where, like, there's actually a card in my system that runs the plugin so that it doesn't use my CPU, and they use really high-end plugins. I'm not being sponsored. That I just use a lot of them, and I think it's fair to say that. Okay, so now notice here. I'm not pulling this up just to move knobs. The low end here... I didn't do anything with. I tried, but there was already too much low end already, so I had to actually taper it down some. I didn't like what this was attenuating. So the way this would work, just to kind of give you an idea, turn it off and on. It's going to get a little louder. It usually does with this plugin. Um, and then I'll kind of show you what it is that we're doing here. So as you can tell, the only thing I was really using it for here is down here, I was boosting at 16K. I just wanted a little bit more symbol, a little bit more clarity, but I didn't want to go too much because that Clarifonic I was showing you earlier, we're going to come to that soon. Then over here around 200, that's around where part of the body of the guitar is at. And I wanted to have that there. Now I'll show you kind of if I take one down and then the other one up and, and et cetera. So... So it gives us just a little bit more body in the guitar, which is what I was looking for. And then over here for our highs, what I was really listening for was the clarity in the guitar and the cymbals. Now I will say I use this plugin on almost every master, not every, but almost. And actually, I'm going to bring that up again really quick. Notice I've used here. I've not used here. I've not used here. I've not used the attenuation here. I only did the boost and I did nothing here. Now, just to show you attenuation. So you have boost and attenuation on these plugins. So if we boost, it's going to boost to these frequencies. And if we attenuate, it's going to bring it down. And you can actually boost and then attenuate afterwards to kind of explain what that looks like. So if I'm going to boost and attenuate, 
what basically that means is like if I'm boosting here, uh, like with this EQ, then attenuating would be kind of like it's dipping it over here to kind of make some more room. If you're boosting somewhere, sometimes dipping the frequency nearby is helpful so that that way it doesn't become just an overkill of mud and mess. Moving along, I'm just going to show you boosting and cutting so you can kind of hear what this plugin does. <laughs> Now, the limiter is on at the very, very end, so there, there was a little bit of that hitting, so that's a little of the distortion. But overall, you can tell that that low just wasn't necessary here. But to show you what attenuating does... And that's how you get a clean master. But don't get it that clean. So Max Bass was another one that came afterwards. So we're going to skip there, and we're going to go straight to our Clarifonic. This one... Uh, so good so so good one thing to note with this plugin is it is easy to overdo normally i actually don't bring these brightnesses up this much on mixes i do because i tend to mix a little bit brighter charlie's mix was a little bit darker and so i was using this to bring it up but you can make it sound thin and weak if you don't accommodate and make sure that it's used properly so here this is going to make it sound a little thinner in the short term but it's going to work out in the end with it off <laughs> Like seriously. And again, I don't normally do this much. It just worked in this mix. This is definitely something that if you're looking for high end, that's not harsh. This plugin is amazing. Just a back and forth with our, our Clarifonic. That thing still amazes me to this day. Now, let's move down the list. Okay, so now right before the compressor, I decided to do another high pass because as we got this far down, I just want to make sure that we didn't bring up any more low end because over here... So I kind of want to bring this down a little bit more still because this is information that we're not going to hear. We might feel, but probably not because of how low it is. This is like 8, 16, 31, 62. So like anything from here down is really not going to be that useful. Now it depends. Sometimes it will be. So as you're moving this around, you don't want to hear it changing the low end that you have. You want it to be cleaning up the low end that you have. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Now, if you watch, it came down to about here, which we're not trying to get rid of it altogether. We're just trying to, to make it less because when we get into the limiting stage and the compression stages, we want to make sure that we're not having the low end make it so we can't get loud. Moving on from here. Technically, I did the compression and everything else down here first and came back and added these. So I'm going to do that to start with. We'll see how that works out. So compression. <laughs> Okay, so this is where I'm going to kick this thing off because it's no longer serving a purpose because we're getting loud enough. So now with our compressor, the goal was I wanted to tame some of the, the transient drums, but I don't want to lose them because we wanted to have a lot of punch, but we want to tame it enough. When you have the peaks and the valleys in a waveform, the highest peak is the highest that your song can be. So if your snare drum happens to hit at a, and it's the highest peak in your song, that's the loudest your song can be. So you have to tame those peaks in order to get more loudness. Now, when you do that, you also are going to lose a certain amount of dynamics. And so you have to be careful. You only want to take it down enough to give you what you want but not so much that you take away the feel now also this one okay so now attack and release the way that these work so attack is basically how much is getting through before the compression if you do it at 0.1 millisecond it's like compressing right out of the gate you do it at this 30 millisecond when you get it to there, you're getting your initial transients through first. So the further over I go, the less you're going to have the transients of the drums. It's going to flatten them out. So let me give you kind of a little example. <laughs> So 
So if you notice, I'm letting most of the transient through, but not all of it, because by getting rid of just a little bit was just enough. Now release depends on how fast you want it to be. You usually want to use your release to kind of make the song breathe. Essentially, every song is going to have like, your groove is going to be in your tempo. And so when you're using a compressor to use it as the groove portion, you're not just listening to tame peaks. You're listening to hear how the motion changes because you want to feel it kind of pulling you along. <laughs> And you notice we're hidden right about here. Like I'm usually only trying to do like in mastering, we're not trying to compress it a ton. Like, like that's, if you're compressing it a ton in mastering, you need to send it back to the person who mixed it and have them kind of tidy it up more because you shouldn't be hitting that much when you're doing mastering. Sometimes with EDM, sometimes with stuff like this with a lot of uh, low end hip hop, but in general, like you're not trying to smother it in mastering. Like if you have a good mix, you shouldn't have to do that much. You're just trying to kind of tame it and stuff like that. But I'm getting it right in here. And if you notice it, you're only really, really seeing it during the transients. Because again, we're not trying to not have those transients come through. We want those transients. Those transients are essentially the part that punches you in the face. Like those are the ones you really want to have. Now, clipping, there's a lot of people that are anti-clipping. There's a lot of people that are pro-clipping. But just to explain what clipping does is unlike compression and limiting, compression is going to change it. It's going to reduce your peak by a certain amount. So like two to one is going to decrease one decibel for every two that it goes up. And four to one means it's going to, for every four decibels, it's over the threshold. It's going to be one decibel over. So it's, you're going to hear it kind of push down. With a clipping plugin, it's literally cutting the top off, like just like and you have to be cautious with these tools. This is a very good way to kind of clip off the top of your snare and your kick, but if you do it too much, you're gonna hear distortion. So I'm gonna show you why you have to be careful. So here's with it, the actual level was. And now let me show you what most people destroy when they don't know how to master, but try and master using these tools. So know that the clipping plugin is just to kind of tame those peaks so you can get a little bit more loudness in it, but you don't want to be making your mix sound crappy. So you need to remember, you don't want to compromise the quality of your sound to get it loud. I mean, I guess if you really want to, back to its art, but you're not going to have as good of a master. Also note, I have 32 times oversampling on here. Oversampling basically means that whereas I'm in a, uh, I think it's a 44-1 session and in that instead of being at like 88.2 or you know up to 192,000 when you do sampling rates at higher levels you're getting more data and more info but it also requires a lot more file size with this it oversamples in the plugin so i don't have to record at that rate the oversampling does it in the plugin so basically better quality less problems tldr so now we're going to go back up here so now we were adding i added some max bass because i wanted to get some of that warmth in after i brought in all the extra highs now i'll bring it up more and down more so you can kind of hear what this is doing what max bass does when you have smaller speakers you were not able to get bass response back to my comment about the phone way earlier max bass is kind of one of your friends for trying to get it to sound good on phones on like small bluetooth speakers crappy car stereos because it's going to give you some bass and frequencies that are hard harmonic frequencies of that same frequency that the low end is in, but let me show you. So without. So note that the mix is cleaner without this on, but with this on, it actually gives it more of that body. Now let's just kind of show you what this is doing. So the original bass sounds like this. And then our max bass. And so the whole point of what we're doing here is we're just trying to get more of those mid-range frequencies and the low end in those mid-range frequencies. We want to have that body. And then just to show you like over and under. Thank you. 
Now, the nice thing with Cubase, this isn't to talk smack about other DAWs, um, digital audio workstations. I love Cubase. I've been using it 15 years. I'm not saying any other one is worse. I just really like Cubase and a lot of the tools it has. And one thing over here is our history. So everything that I have shown you that I have done plugin wise is recorded here. So I can go all the way back to the beginning if I wanted to, if I've made mistakes. And sometimes that happens and it's a really handy feature to have. And then lastly, the last thing that I did was this extra mid. So I was feeling like there was still just a little bit that I was not happy with the, the low mids. So before I actually turn it on, on, here's where we're at. <laughs> Now, I like the way it sounded, but I wanted to get just a little more body in the guitars. Um, and also, as you look at my, uh, my meter up here, there's just a little bit in here that I feel like it could come up because we're still trying to get this to be mostly flat. Now, we're not trying to get it totally flat. Like, let's not get ridiculous. Like, it's not about the visual, but the meter is a good way to kind of tell where you're at. And so we add this in and I'll, I'll have it off to start and then I'll turn it on. Basically, this is what we got going on. So we, we start off, we go through, we do our low cut initially, try and get rid of some of the mud and we try and level out our meter so that that way we get it more flat before we start working on it. Cause you want to get it closer to flat before you want to fix the problems before you try and enhance the, the quality. So that's what we were doing here. So we do our, our stuff there and then straight the next one I usually use the pull tech. And like I said, from here, all I did, I just used the boost at two at 200. Didn't use the dip. Didn't use the peak over here. Used some boost for the height frequencies. Didn't use the low end because it just wasn't working right. Not for this song in particular. We've got max bass that's in there and that's adding just that little bit of that mid range harmonic frequencies of the bass. We've got our clairphonic, which is just ridiculously amazing at giving clarity, but also don't overdo it because it's really easy to overdo because it sounds good. But then when it sounds good, it might not sound good later because then it might get to where it's well, it's too much brightness. Then we go over here and then I did another low pass just to make sure before I hit the compressor. Cause like I said, we were going for loud. We wanted to get this nice and, and solid. Then going into the SSL for the bus compression. And again, low two to one ratio. We're not trying to, to do major smashing. We're just trying to tame it and give it a little bit of movement. The attack was slow so that that way the transient's getting most of the way through, but not all the way slow because I wanted to kind of reduce it a little bit. The release is fast because I want to hear that transient. Then I want to hear the song back. I don't want to hear it drifting too much. It's a quick song. I want to be able to hear every articulate thing that's happening down to the clipper, which again, just be careful with a clipper. Clipping is really good for trying to get that extra gain out, but make sure you're not screwing up your sound when you do it because it causes distortion. You're literally causing digital distortion. So if you don't do it correctly, you are going to destroy something, but when done right, you'll get a little bit more volume or you'll get a little bit of a different transient depending on what kind of sound you're going for. Cause you can use those on drums. You can use them on, I and mean, you can use them on other stuff, but it's not going to sound as good. Usually use it on transient type stuff. Lastly is the precision limiter, which is universal audio without it. And with it. So you get the idea when going for gain reduction, I'm usually not trying to go more than around three DB with the limiter. I'm usually shooting for around and numbers can lie. So don't just take a number and run with it. But as a ballpark, um, cause like I said, at the very beginning of this, I had references I was clicking through also do know that I'm bouncing between these for reference points. Also, I'm not just using my ear. Some mixes I can do that, but most I, I try and have a reference to what the artist is looking for. The last thing that I want to do is we're going to turn everything on. Okay. So now this is our starting point. And so while it's grayed out, that's our starting point. And while this is on, that's our ending point. And as you hear the back and forth, the limiter is being used to put it to where it's even. So I'm going to bring the limiter here. And as you can see, like I have the volume down on this substantially. This is just so that, that way you can kind of hear the before and the after. So this is before where we started from. <laughs> Now, 
Now, I've only really shown one little section of the song. I'm going to play a little bit on the way out of this, but just know, like, go check it out. They're some of the hardest workers in the business that I know. They're constantly working on the craft. Their art is amazing. The merchandise you want just because it's so cool. And I love puns. So the fact that everything they do is a pun, I mean, why was I not going to like it? Although the one bone to pick, I've been saying for the last few years that because of the amount of puns that I use, I've joked with my friends. I'm going to be like, one of these years, I'm going to be the pun isher. And then they did a song, The Pun Isher. Well played, sir. Anyway, I hope some of this was helpful. If it wasn't, well, hopefully it was entertaining or something. And if not, I'm sure I'll see a thumb up or thumb down and that'll let me know. But either way, if you want to see more of these, let me know. Um, if you don't, well, just don't watch them. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for hanging out here for this bit while I'm kind of explaining through things. And see you around.